I will carry you on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scatter monsters under your bed. Deep in the biting, liking for you is all I need. Until my heart gives in, I will do everything I can. Hello, crafty friends. It's Caroline, and I'm back today with another really fun project for you using the not too shabby March paper kit. And these are the paper pads of the month. This is the one for March. It is a subscription. When you subscribe, you get two paper pads every month. They just show up at your doorstep and it's a wonderful surprise, high quality. You know, you don't expect anything less from Jamie. And these paper pads this month are absolutely darling. They just scream of spring and they're super fun. Now, the first project that I brought to you guys was for these little mini folios. And I thought that it would be really neat if I made something that the folios could be gifted in. We came up with this really fun little basket, a May Day basket, Mother's Day basket, just because basket, Easter basket, and it is a door hanger. So it's made to slip over the door handle and hang up there. And I think they turned out super cute. I love the idea of leaving an anonymous gift for someone. And not only are they super cute, but they're really easy. You can make one of these door hanger baskets using a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and one and a half sheets of six by six pattern paper. Isn't that great? All right, let's go ahead and get into the actual making of the basket base, the door hanger base, and we'll move on from there. Okay, so I'm doing this on yellow cardstock so it'll show up better, and then I'm gonna go over it with some lines, and that way you can see very clearly what it is that we're doing. We're beginning with a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. You're gonna place it in your scoreboard on the 11 inch side, and you're gonna score it at six and a quarter, at eight and a quarter, and at 10 and a half, okay? And then you're gonna turn it to the eight and a half inch side so that all of the score marks you just made are at the bottom of the page. And then you're gonna score at two and five eighths, but you're only gonna score down to the second score mark there. Okay, so that's the score mark that was at eight and a quarter. So you're gonna take your, your scoring tool starting at two and five eighths, and you're gonna come down to the mark that it's at eight and a quarter. Then you're gonna go to five and seven eighths and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna bring that down to the mark that's at eight and a quarter. And then I think it's easier to turn it around for these next two. So we're gonna turn this all the way around just like this. And you're gonna score this at a half an inch on either side. So I'm gonna score this at eight inches, but I'm only gonna come up to that eight and a quarter mark that we made. And over here, I'm gonna score at half inch up to that eight and a quarter mark that we made. Now, the only other scoring that we need to do is we need a half an inch tab on either side of this little rectangular section here in the middle. So I like to come over here. So I'm, I was at five and seven eighths. I'm gonna come over a half of an inch to six and three eighths. And I'm not really scoring. I'm just lightly running it down there. When I get to that first score mark, I'm gonna press a little harder and I'm gonna score straight down to that eight and a quarter. And then I'm gonna come over here to the two five eighths inch mark and I'm gonna move over a half an inch to my left. So I'm gonna come over here to two and an eight. And again, I'm just sort of lightly dragging it down. When I get to that first mark, I'm pressing and I'm gonna score that little section right there. Okay, so let me get a pencil and go over these lines so you can sort of see it. Okay, so I very lightly dragged down from two and an eighth until I got to that six and a quarter mark. And then I scored from the six and a quarter mark to the eight and a quarter mark. I scored all the way down on the two and five eighths inch mark down to the eight and a quarter mark. I scored from the five and seven eighths all the way down to the eight and an eight or eight and a quarter inch mark. I came over to six and three eighths and I just very lightly, you know, drug it down for that portion. And then when I got to this first mark here at six and a quarter, I scored down to eight and a quarter. Okay. And the first scores that we made were at six and a quarter all the way across, at eight and a quarter all the way across, and at 10 and a half all the way across, okay? And then we need a half an inch on either side up to where that eight and a quarter inch mark was, which is that second line from the bottom, okay? So you're gonna end up with a piece that looks um, that has the score marks like this. The heavier markings here are the score marks. This is just where I sort of drug it 
I know it's not very straight, sorry, but it's where you can kind of feel it and kind of bring it down and you get to that point and then go ahead and score it like that. So now we're gonna make some cuts. And the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna cut out these squares here in the corner, but I wanna miter this little part there. Okay, so I'm gonna give a little angle on this little part here that's gonna be at a, a tab. So I'm coming straight down at this part and then I'm gonna kinda come in at an angle there on that part there, okay? I'm gonna come straight all the way in on this line until I get to that mark, that original mark that went all the way down. So I'm gonna go past that little half inch portion here that's gonna be at a tab, and I'm gonna cut up to that point right there, okay? Do the same thing on this line, straight across until I get to that point. And then I'm gonna cut out this little excess here. This is one of only two pieces that are gonna be waste for us. And then I do wanna go ahead and miter each end of that tab. So I've sort of freed up that tab a little bit. You see that? I also wanna give this a slight little miter there too, okay? Come around here to the other side and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna cut all the way up to that full score mark on either side of this little section here. Free out this little tab here. And then I wanna cut a couple miters on either end of that tab just to give it a little bit more freedom of movement, just like that. I'm gonna miter this little portion there, okay? So now I've got a piece that looks like this. Let's go ahead and clean up all of our little clippings here. And then from here, you're gonna fold and burnish these score marks on either side of that section that's three and a quarter inches wide, that sort of top section here. So burnish those really well, fold them around to the back. You're gonna fold and burnish these tabs inside onto themselves here, onto the paper, okay? These two tabs are also gonna be folded inward just like that. And this little half inch section here, that's gonna be folded outward, kind of to fold over on itself on the back side of the paper there. That's actually gonna end up being the front, okay? Now you wanna fold and burnish these score marks as well, the ones that were the six and a quarter and the eight and a quarter, okay? And this is the base for our basket door hanger. Now, a couple things that I wanna do first is I wanna go ahead and start putting my pattern paper on here first. So I'm gonna run through this whole process again with the gray paper now that you've sort of seen how I do it with the yellow and you can come back and reference. But I thought this would show up a little more. It's a little more of a contrast. So let me get the paper that I actually want to use. <laughs> and this is some eight and a half by 11 cardstock from Basil. The color is um, Tiara. I got this at Tuesday morning quite a while ago. This was back when they were doing this big clear out of all these Basil papers. And I just, I bought several packages and it's one of the ones I got. You can use so. any cardstock you want. This is a heavier weight cardstock. I want to say it's like 80, 80 five pounds something I don't see a, a pound weight on here but it is a slightly heavier weight cardstock you want something with some body I like this one because it's sparkly <laughs> I think it's pretty I'm going to trim off the branding strip first um, and your cardstock may not come with a branding strip mine just did so I'm going to trim that off get my scoreboard and again we're going to begin on the 11 inch side and I'm going to score it at six and a quarter all the way down at eight and a quarter and at ten and a half just like that. Then we're gonna turn it so that our score marks are at the bottom and we're gonna score at two and five eighths we get to that eight and a quarter inch score mark. And then we're gonna score at five and seven eighths all the way down until we get to that eight and a quarter inch score mark, okay? And then I wanna come a half an inch beyond that five and seven eighths inch mark to the six and three eighths and I'm just lightly dragging it down. If you wanna score firmly, you can. I'm just sort of lightly scoring it until I get to this first mark here that was at the six and a quarter. And then I'm pressing when I come down to the eight and a quarter. And I'm gonna come over here to the two and five eighths and I'm gonna come a half an inch over to the left to two and an eight and lightly score down until I get to that first mark, that six and a quarter. And again, you can he more heavily score if you'd like. And then we're gonna score all the way down to the eight and a quarter, okay? And then a couple other little marks that we need to make. And that is I need to do a half an inch on either side. And I think it's easier if we had it like this, I think it's easier if you take this half inch score mark that was on one of the 11 inch sides and turn it around to the top. And we're gonna score a half an inch until we get to what was the eight and a quarter inch score mark. 
or that second score mark from where you're pulling down. Okay, so we're gonna go past this one to this one, okay? And that is all the score marks we're gonna make. I'm gonna use my finger blade this time because you guys probably know I, I just prefer my finger blade. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and free up these tabs in the same way that I had um, shown you before when I was using the scissors. Just gonna come down here, make a couple little miter cuts there. Go ahead and trim this off. Get that freed. Trim off this one. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. I wanna go ahead and make my straight cut down. My little miters for my tabs on either side of my tab. And I come straight down like this. Straight down like this. Do my little miter cuts for my tabs. And then go ahead and free up this piece here. Just like that, okay? So now we've got the exact same piece that we had here in the yellow, and you can sort of see my lines a little bit more in the yellow, so that's why I did it that way, but this is what we've got here. So now let's go ahead and fold and burnish. We want all of our little side tabs, the, the two on this section and the two on this section, we want them to be folded up. So let's go ahead and fold and burnish those. This little half inch tab here, which it looks like I got a little crooked on my cut, so let me straighten that out. This little half inch tab here is gonna be folded around to the back, okay? Just like that. And then these two here are just gonna be folded over um, so that we can kind of create our box shape here, right? For our basket. So we've got them like this. And then these two here, on, not on the lighter score mark, but on the first score mark, we made the heavier score mark. They're gonna get folded around to the back. And these are actually gonna get glued down in the back. It's gonna give us a lot of uh, stability and structure because in the little um, the little loop part that's gonna hang here on our basket, that's, that's a lot of weight and we don't have a lot of distance on that. And so I love having all these layers built up because it gives it some strength when it's hanging on the door. I can actually put some heavy things in there. So we're, we're not trimming those pieces off at all. We're keeping them there to add some structure to it. So now that we've got our general shape ready here. Let's cut some pattern paper so we can prepare that to put on as well. And so I've got two sheets of my six by six cardstock, one from the gingham prints, one from the floral prints from the um, spring tulips and the spring gingham. And on the floral one, the first thing I want to point out is that sometimes, not often, but sometimes you'll have a little bit of residue at the top of the card pack where it's sort of the glue is on there. If that happens, just trim the tiniest little bit off and you'll go ahead and fix that. We are going to trim that to three inches so that it's three inches wide and six inches tall. And so we've got that out of our pattern paper. And then for the gingham print, we're gonna trim a two inch strip off of there. And then we're gonna trim a three inch strip off of there. And that's gonna leave us with this little one inch strip as well. So I'm gonna set those aside. And the pieces that we're gonna use are the two printed papers that are um, three inches wide by six inches tall, these two here. And the two pieces here, the one that is two inches wide by six inches and the one that's one inch wide by six inches. And we're actually gonna piece this together so that we can make a strip going across here to sort of cover all of this this paper because I don't have a strip that's long enough to cover this front part, part of the basket and I cut this one at three inches rather than another you know three two inch strips because I figure I can use this for one of my you know one of my backing pieces on another one and I can piece this in this gingham in on other you know subsequent ones I hope that makes sense I hope I'm making sense I don't think I am so on this one that's one inch by six inches we're going to trim that down into three two inch sections so they will be two inches by one inch and those will be the ones that we're going to add on to our portions here so, so there we go and now the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and glue these gingham pieces down, but they're actually going to be glued on the back side. It's going to seem counterintuitive, but this little flap that folds over, that's going to fold over the front of the gingham pieces. So let's bend it over to the back side. And on this paper, it's easy to tell the front from the back because the front has the sparkle on it and the back does not. It's a matte finish. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up like this. We're going to place some glue on the back side of our gingham print here. And I think I actually want this 
lighter peach to show. I think it's kind of pretty. So let's go ahead and put glue all over the back here. And I'm going to position it kind of towards the, um, the bottom of the section because this is going to flap over the front but I want to make sure that I've got it centered you know and taking into consideration this little extra piece that I'm going to glue on so I want to scooch it over just a little bit like that and that way when this piece comes on we're sort of centered put some glue on the back of this extra little piece here and we're going to glue it down there we go okay so now we're going to flip it back over to this side and we need to work on punching our holes I used a two inch hole punch um, just a, a hole punch that I had in my stash. You can use dies if you have round circle dies. Um, you can use just about anything. I found that the two inch is the right size for my, for all of the door handles in my house, okay? But you may have different size door handles. I think that this is pretty standard. My home is not an older home, but I know that in some of the older homes where you have like the glass doorknobs and stuff, you may have a different size to consider, or maybe you have a different type of a, a door handle altogether, you know, maybe something with a little thumb latch or something like that in that case what you might want to do is you may actually want to like cut a slit into this so that it could open and slip over something and sort of grab itself and I would just cut an angle slit like that in this lower portion of the circle part that way you've got more structure kind of holding up here but this would be the access point I've tested it on my doors it works so I'm going to go with the two inch uh, hole punch and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up I can't this punch isn't strong enough to punch through multiple layers so I've got to do this a few times I'm just centering it I'm like eyeball centering it on this section so between these two folded pieces here I'm trying to center my hole punch and I'm kind of looking at the edges of my hole punch and lining it up and just trying to eyeball a center. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly centered, it will be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch out that hole just like that. And then for each side, I need to do the same thing. So I'm gonna fold one side back and I'm gonna take my hole punch again. And if I do it like where I'm looking at it from the bottom, kind of upside down, I can sort of see what I'm doing a little better. Oops slip it in there and I'm just lining it up with the circle I already punched out before I'm gonna punch that again just like that and then fold the other side back and do the same thing so three punches here I know but it's gonna give us a lot of um, structural stability by having all of those layers glued together and like I said my full punch won't punch through more than one layer at a time so it's just what I'm doing <laughs> Now, these aren't perfect circles because they don't line up that way. That's okay. We just need these layers to layer up. We're going to cover it with some pattern paper anyway, so you're not going to see that, um, but that's just what we're doing right now, okay? So the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to line up the same hole with the pattern paper that's going to cover it. So I'm just... I'm really just laying this out, sort of centering it here on that section. I've got a little bit of a reveal all the way around. This center section is three and a quarter inches wide by six and a quarter inches tall. Our pattern papers are three by six, so we should have like an eighth of an inch border all the way around. And again, not I'm not getting out a you know measuring tool to make sure. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm going to take a couple pieces of this repositionable tape, right? Well, messy pieces apparently. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple pieces of repositionable tape and just hold it into place. And then when I turn it over, I can either take my pencil and just mark around there and punch the hole, or I can just do what I did on the others and line it up so that I can see the, the circle that was punched out previously, sort of line it up with the pattern paper that's in there and go ahead and punch that one out. Just like that and now I have a perfectly placed um, circle for my pattern paper as well now on this one and I'm gonna be making multiples of these I probably won't glue this down until I've cut them all out because I think it's easier just to have this as a template so now all I need to do is line it up with all of my other pieces of pattern paper that I want to you know use to cover it and go ahead and place it in and punch that same circle out of those as well. So now I've got my two pieces that are going to cover the front and the back here. I've gone ahead and put my pattern paper on this little front part of my basket. It's time for us to start assembling it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and glue down this little um, what is essentially the rim of our basket. It's the half inch score mark that we made at the ten and a half inches on the 11 inch side. 
And so we're gonna go ahead and just glue that down, give it a nice firm burnishing. There we go. And then we're gonna put our pattern paper that we want to have on the front on. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that one down. Just go ahead and place it right over that circle. It should be centered exactly where you want it to be um, because we already lined it up and sort of dry fit it in that way. Give it a nice firm burnishing, just like that. Okay. And then on the back side here, we wanna glue both of these down completely flat. And as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing I have a little bit sticking out when I, when I trimmed that, I didn't trim it very straight. And so I am gonna come in here and just sort of clean that up a little bit. I don't want it sticking down past the bottom. That looks better. Um, so if you have that, that's just all you need to do. <laughs> and from the back side, and this is for me, it's the dull side of the paper, right? So I'm just gonna come around and on each of these little wings on either side, I'm gonna put glue all over them and stick them down as well. And like I said, that's what's gonna give us a lot of strength here for our door hanger. Now you guys might hear some noise and stuff from outside. It is a Saturday morning and I am just happy in my craft room and there is a strong smell of rain in the air outside. And it's just, you know, that, that sort of feeling where the atmosphere is like pregnant with water, like it's just ready to release, you know? <laughs> and um, it's just so, I don't know, it just feels like we're gonna have some spring storms today. I haven't checked the weather yet, but I believe we probably will. Um, feels a little early for that being that it's still March, but we've been having them here in Oklahoma. We've had some, some real kind of doozies of some even tornado storms here recently, so. A little bit unusual, but not unheard of, that's for sure. And we can certainly use the moisture. So it feels nice. I've got, like I said, I've got the windows open, even though you can hear some dogs off in the distance and kids playing and stuff like that. Um, hopefully it's not bothering you guys too much. I just, it just feels really nice in here right now. <laughs> I just love the feeling of that. I don't know, it's just right before a storm. It just feels kind of exciting or something. I don't know. All right, so we've now um, glued that down and burnished it together and it's nice and thick and it's got a lot of structure to it. It's really great. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, basically attach our sides to make our basket. I could have run my, um, I could have gone ahead and creased these and made a crisp corner, but I felt like it looked more like a basket to have this sort of rounded edge here. So I didn't, I didn't give that a really firm crease. And let me show you how I did that. Now, if you want to, you would just extend those score marks down past that eight and a quarter inch mark, you know, um, and you could have done that. But I just, like I said, I, I wanted it to look more like a basket. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna give it a little bit of a curl. So I'm just kind of running my bone folder along here and just curving it a little bit. You can also do it like on the edge of your table, pull it down like that where when you pull it down, it sort of rounds that corner. Um, just whatever you're comfortable with, but I think you know what I mean. And just give it just a slight little curve there. And then I'm gonna push these tabs in. We'll glue those down last. Right now, I just want them in and out of the way. And then we're gonna take each of these tabs here and they're gonna get attached to the back side of my, um, of my door hanger here. And so as you can see, it's creating kind of a curve there. I want them attached to the back side. I want this portion here flush with the bottom with this fold here that I've, that I've made here on this tab. You see that? So I'm gonna put glue on the inside of my tab. And then that is gonna translate to coming around to the back side here. We're gonna line it up, bring it around to the back just like that. And I'm gonna hold it just long enough for it to sort of catch. Once I feel like it's really kind of taken hold, then I'm gonna go in with my bone folder and I'm just burnishing from the inside. I'm burnishing down to really flatten that out. Um, since I've got this basket portion on the front, I can't really burnish from the backside, but I can from the inside here. And once that's set the way I want it, I'm gonna come over here to this other tab, put some glue on the inside of it bring it around to the back here, whoops, kind of line it up, hold it in place um, until it starts to take hold. And it doesn't take that long, just, you know, the art glitter glue is pretty, it, 
it grabs on pretty quickly, but um, just till it takes hold. Now, if you wanted to use like your ATG gun or some double-sided tape or something like that, I feel like you could for the pattern paper, but I definitely wouldn't for this construction portion. You really need something that's gonna be a little bit more sturdy there. Okay, so now for these little tabs here, we're gonna kind of continue to give this a little bit of a curve, right? Um, still a little bit too straight here. I want to just sort of run my bone folder in and kind of curve that around like that. And then I'm going to go inside here. I'm going to open up one of those flaps, put glue all over the tab there. And then it's going to come up and grab on the inside of this sort of basket portion here. So see like that? See where I'm grabbing that? And then I'm just gonna hold it and really press it down from the inside. I can't really show you this, but I'm coming in here and I'm just really pressing that down from the inside, making sure I've got good contact until it sets. That looks really good. So this is the underneath side of it. You can see I probably could have held that a little longer. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of glue in there. Just give it a little, little press. Just try to hold it in place a little bit longer. There we go. That works. Mm, looks like this got a little off. There we go. Okay, so same thing on this other side. I'm coming in here and putting glue all over that uh, part of the tab that's gonna, the outside part of the tab here that's gonna attach to the inside of the basket. I hope you can see that. And then that's gonna get pressed down inside of the basket like that. So let's go ahead and line it up from this side to hold it in place just long enough for it to take hold and then just really burnish it down from the inside using your bone folder just kind of reaching into that basket shape and pressing down on that tab until it catches and there we go we now have our door hanger just it's it looks great it's coming together the only last thing we need to do is go ahead and put our other pattern paper on the back side here and again this was from the same piece of paper if you want it to match and you want it to be the tulips just you know do the tulips on the back if you want it to be coordinating just do the back side of whatever that paper was um, i'm planning on making several of these so i'll probably mix and match and that's how I'm gonna put it together. But yeah, I think this looks really great. So let's put some glue on here and just center it, you know, top, bottom, left, right. Mostly focusing on that circle that we cut out. Once you get it where you want it, just go from the inside and burnish it down, you know, through those layers. Get it down nice and tight. And there you have it. Now we can finish this off with a bow, which would just be absolutely darling, right? Um, we could finish this off with um, some other like stickers or ephemera or things like that. I don't want to put too much around the actual circle opening because it's got to go over the door handle and I don't necessarily want it to get in the way. These sweet little three by four folios fit perfectly in here and you can still put over the door handle. I've already tried with that. You could slip some candy or chocolates in here, maybe a few little bits of fresh flowers. I think I'm actually gonna make some paper flowers and put in and this would be a nice little treat for some crafty friends. It's just a wonderful way to leave a little surprise on someone's doorstep or on your um, co-workers office door, something like that. And it would be lovely as a May Day basket. It would be lovely filled with little Easter treats. Let me go ahead and play around with some others, see what we can come up with, um, and I'll be right back. Of an 
I think they turned out super cute. I'm loving them. I think if I want to do a bow on them, I want to punch a couple holes and actually tie the bow through the front. But if I want to add this sweet little bunny on the front, it's just kind of a prototype playing around. But you guys use your imagination. Put whatever fun things you want to have on the front here. Um, you could put someone's name, use some of your alpha dies and cut out someone's name to put on there to personalize it. You could put a little sentiment on the front that says happy birthday, happy Mother's Day, happy Easter, whatever it is, happy spring. Spring. <laughs> and these just fit perfectly on uh, the door handles and you can fill them up with whatever it is that you want to fill them up with. I'm going to work on some little goodies to put in here and then I'll come back and I'll show you sort of the finished little products once we get done with all of those. All right, I have finished them. I have decorated them and I'm starting to sort of fill them with different assortments of goodies. This one, as you can tell, is just filled with candies. I've got some Jolly Ranchers, some Dum Dums, and I went ahead and sort of laced the ribbon all the way around so it crosses the back and comes to the front and then just tied it in a bow here. And this one is more of like a, a crafter friend theme for one of your paper crafting friends. These are some flat back pearl embellishments. I've got a couple of little bottles of the Nouveau Crystal Drops. Again, I just sort of laced that ribbon all the way around there and tied it in the front. And this would be so fun to just hang on a doorknob for one of your crafty friends. Or, you know, you can mail it out to them too, but I just, I love the door hanger aspect of this. This one here, I was thinking more of like maybe a meditative box a little self-care. There's some smudge spray, some tea bags. Um, this is just a little bell. Try to get you into a peaceful state of meditation. I don't know. I thought it would be kind of fun. I was trying to come up with different varieties. So again, same lacing around the side on this one. And then this one, I was playing around with something different. I sort of made a little makeshift uh, bunny face here. And then I put an ink pad of the Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide um, ink in here. Some of the mini prills. These are great when you're making flowers and they sort of go in place of the stamens and kind of the center of the flowers. And then just added another little ink dot or something like that. I was thinking this would be for that crafty friend that you have that likes to make, you know, paper flowers, do a little bit more mixed media stuff. I don't know, kind of fun. I would love to see this with a little chocolate bunny. I just didn't happen to have any to show you. Um, someone's birthday. My goodness, you could fill it with all sorts of fun things. Stick a gift card in there. I really think you're only limited by your imagination on these. It's a great base to sort of build upon. And I love the idea of giving gifts anonymously and just kind of dropping off something on someone's door handle. I think that's really fun. So I do wanna show you how I made this. Now, um, I just sort of threw this together pretty quickly. I'm gonna try to be a little bit less haphazard and sort of show you a process. And we'll show how that is done. And then I also wanna show you how I punched my holes and laced the ribbon around here so that you can see how you can finish it off that way as well. Now for lacing the ribbon through there, all I did was I came along with my hole punch and I punched two holes 
on either side of you know these side pieces here um, and they can be close together they can be far apart it really doesn't matter but I need two holes on this side and I'm gonna kind of mirror the same spacing over here I'm not measuring I'm just eyeballing and it's perfectly fine it's it's gonna be good <laughs> so I've got two holes on either side and then when I want to do four holes in the front I want to do two closer together towards the side and two closer together over here towards this side so I'm kind of coming in parallel with the edge of the um, the circle cut out sort of and that's just where I'm establishing my first little punch and then I'm gonna come next to that one not too close but a little close right and then do the same thing over here just like that so I have a total of two four six eight holes punched in here and that is how I'm gonna lace it now for the ribbon I think anywhere from 24 to um, well, actually 26 to 28 inches long is gonna be just the right amount of length. You don't want it to be too short and be struggling with tying your bow. So, you know, err on the side of making it a little bit longer than you might think that you need. I am using a darning needle. You can use a darning needle, upholstery needle, anything with a large eye so that you can actually thread your ribbon through. And I'm leaving a tail of about four to six inches on it. And beginning on this, hole that's the second from the left I'm coming into the basket and I'll leave a tail about six or so inches long here I'm going to come back out in that hole that's just to the left of it and we're just going to work our way in and out of all of these holes as we go all the way around this basket okay so now I'm going to go back in and you're just going to have to make sure that your ribbon is sort of laying the way you want it to um, I prefer double face satin on some ribbon. This is a single face satin. Um, so I have to be a little bit mindful of where it falls if I want the shiny side out. So um, if that's the case for you, just make sure that as you're going, it's sort of laying the way you want it to. And I'm just gonna continue to work my way all the way around, going in and out and in and out until I've um, gone through all of the holes. And once I've gotten all of those, um, you know, I've laced all the way through all the holes. If it's a little bit, you know, off, if you have one side that's a lot longer than the other, you can go around and sort of loosen them and kind of work it around to tighten it up and get that slack over to the side that you need it on. So we just sort of got that where they're a little closer to even in length. And then I'm gonna set it down here and just go ahead and tie my, uh, my bow. Now, when I am tying, if I want the bow to go in the same direction as whatever the lacing is or the, the tails of the ribbon or whatever it is, then I tie a, what I would call like a, a bunny ears bow, right? Where you do the two loops and you tie them together. If I want the bow to go perpendicular to or cross over whatever the lacing is, then you tie the bow like you're chasing the bunny rabbit around the tree, right? And you come in that way. I'm gonna do the two bunny ears. And then as you can see, when you go to pull it, it's gonna lay in the same direction as the um, lacing or the ribbon or you know whatever it is that was kind of leaning up to it. So I want it to lay in that way and that's why I wanted to cut it that way. Now, if you want these tails to lay down the right way, you just have to sort of loosen it um, and kind of work them. If I push up from the backside of where the, the satin finish is, then that creates it to kind of roll around and I'll end up with the satin finish on the tail of my bow. I'm gonna do the same thing with this other side here, where I loosen it a little bit and then get it to where it's laying the way I want it to and then tighten it on up. And then you've got your bow sort of sitting the way you want. Now, all I'm gonna do is uh, trim my tails and then I'm gonna go ahead and singe the ends with a lighter. Now, if you're not comfortable with using a lighter, simply use some fray check or your art glitter glue or let them fray if you want. That's you know a whole different vibe, a whole different look and that's okay. So that's how I went ahead and laced that through and tied my bow on the front of them. I had a little bit of green shred here that I placed in and then all of the goodies go in on top of that. Now let's take a look at how to make the bunny face. Okay, so when I made this, it was just like, I don't know, just really haphazard. 
I didn't do a lot with it. I just sort of hacked at some things that were sort of ear shaped and slapped some glossy accents on it. And you know, it's what it was. So, but let's take a little bit more <laughs> strategic approach to it this time. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull from my scraps. And when you make these, you end up with, you know, these cutouts like this, right? So um, it's a lot of extra little pieces like that of whatever your base cardstock is, whatever your eight and a half by 11 cardstock is. But then you'll also have a bunch of scraps like these, right? So I think you don't even really need to think about cutting into any more paper. We're just gonna use the scraps. And so even though I wanna be a little less haphazard than it was the first time, for the base color, for whatever you used for your cardstock for your hangers, that's what I'm gonna use this little cutoff here to make my ears. And I'm simply gonna fold it in half and give it a nice firm crease. And then I'm not even gonna draw on here. I'm just gonna kind of make an ear shape. I'm picking a point and I'm gonna cut down in kind of a fat little ear shape. I don't know what else to call it, right? So now I have a mirror image of the same ear shape here. And I need to do some paper on the inside that's gonna be like my accent color or something like that, right? And so I'm just gonna take this piece and fold it in half also. In fact, let's fold it in half the other way. So then I'm gonna take one of my ear cutouts, I'm gonna place it right on top of this folded piece of paper, just making sure I've got enough room left and right. I'm scooching it down so that the tip um, is touching kind of the, the very edge over here of my folded paper. And I made, a, I made a line along there. And that's where I wanna cut for one side. But for the other side, I wanna scooch it over just a little bit because I want it to be a little bit smaller. And now I'm gonna draw this side of the line. And that should fit just inside of the ear that we just cut out. So now go ahead and take your scissors and cut around those lines. And if you wanna you know, make it a little smaller too, just cut to the inside of the lines. And now that we've got those cut out, they should fit just inside of our ear shapes over here. And they do, I think they're super cute. And then these little snippets that I had left over from when I was trimming those out, that's what I was using to make the um, whiskers with. So I'm just gonna cut like right along the fold on this one and then just start cutting them into strips, just like that and then gather, I don't know, like three to five of them maybe. There, I've got five of them. And then I'm just gonna sort of curl them and you know, maybe curl them in different directions. Have it like that. So those are gonna be my little whiskers. And then I'm gonna reach over here to another one of these little pieces of the gray cardstock. And in fact, I don't even have to use that circle. This was part of what we used to cut out this um, ear shape with on that fold, I can get a nice little triangle right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip that. And now we've just got a little triangle shape there for our nose. And I'm gonna use some of these flat back pearls for the eyes. And now we're ready to start assembling. I'm gonna put some glue on the back sides of my little ear matting pieces, the inner parts of my ears, and stick them down. And then when I, I wanna create a little dimension on my ears, so I'm gonna take my scoring tool and I'm gonna come from the peak of the ear and I'm just gonna come right down the center. It doesn't have to necessarily be a straight line, but I'm just pulling it right down the center there, however it wants to go. And then I'm gonna give it just a little, a little crease along there, just a little folding, okay? And now I wanna take my um, bone folder and just sort of curl from the back side and curl from the front side, just to give it a little more shape. Go ahead and crease that score mark again. And we're just shaping our ears. So, you know, just give it a curl if you think it needs a curl and give it a bend if you think it needs a bend and get it looking the way you want it to look. And there we go. So now I'm gonna bring in my basket, and this is the little gift I had set out for that. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the front of the ears and sort of eyeball where the center is, and I'm gonna glue, attach them from the inside of the basket. Give it a little squeeze, clean up any glue that might come seeping out. I got a little heavy handed there. There we go. Take the other ear, put a little glue on the front side at the bottom and kind of place it in here. Clean up any that might be seeping out. Just like that. And then let's go ahead and get our whiskers in place and that'll sort of tell us where we need to put our eyes. I'm thinking maybe like here. Yep, 
I think that's a good placement. I'm gonna take a little dab of glue right there, pretty uh, pronounced actually, and I'm gonna start laying these down in that uh, glue. And then once I've got those laid down in the glue kind of the way I want, so twist them a little bit there, then I'm gonna take another little dab of glue or a, kind of a big dab of glue actually. <laughs> and I'm just gonna glue my little triangle on right on top of that, sort of pressing it into that glue setting it kind of where I want it to be. Now, this is a lot of glue and you're gonna to have to let it set for a minute, but I think that this is good. Yep, I like it. And now for the eyes, I've got my little um, tool to help me pick up my embellishments here. I'm gonna use these flat back pearls. The way I bought these when I first started getting into paper crafting and I feel like I've n I haven't even made a dent in them yet. <laughs> Make my little spots where I want my eyes and I'm thinking these kind of copper color ones, I think they're cute. There we go. And then for a mouth, I actually wanna use my Nuvo drops. <laughs> I think we're gonna use this one and I'm just gonna draw a little, just a sweetheart little mouth down here. I feel like the mouth is maybe a little bit too gloppy, so I'm just gonna draw some of it back here with the smaller tip of my scoring tool. It's got a rounded little tip to it, so I'm not worried about it snagging in the paper or anything and I'm able to sort of shape this a little bit better <laughs> so it doesn't look quite so mean. Um, there we go. That's a much sweeter little smile, I think, on our bunny. And I tied this cute little bow that I think is gonna look super nice in her hair or somewhere up here, maybe like that. Yeah, I think that's cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down too just by putting a big old dollop of some art glitter glue down here and letting the bow sort of sit into it. And there we go, we got our little bunny face on here. <laughs> I think it's cute. Um, you know, it's only the second one I made, so I don't know, I feel like this one might have been a little bit cuter, although I got the ears kind of dirty up there. Oh, I forgot about that. On this one, I used some of the Nuvo um, crystal drops to just sort of, I don't know, make the ears a little sparkly. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm gonna try it on this one too. There we go, that looks so cute. Now let's slip our goodies in. I was thinking this one is kind of more of a memory keeping one. We're gonna put that little folio in here and then a couple rolls of washi tape. Cause if you're gonna you know, put photos in there, you might want some washi tape to decorate it. Isn't that one just darling? And again, it'll still fit over the door handle, even if it has to lean forward like this, it'll still fit. Um, it's just a really fun little thing to do. <laughs> now, if you have a doorknob that is not like a regular, you know, round doorknob, maybe it's one that has like a little thumb latch or something on it, or maybe you have one that needs a hole larger than two inches, then you can always come along here and just clip right up here at an angle, just like this. And now this will fit through a door handle or over a larger door handle like that. And it's still gonna be strong enough to hold something. So even if you have to make that little clip in there to make it go around easier, um, it still is gonna be really strong because we've got all these layers up here. So it's gonna still carry the weight just fine and be strong enough to, uh, to hold what you need it to hold. So like I just put my glue bottle, my um, corner rounder and my scissors in here and it's still gonna hold that just fine, not worried about it at all. And it would hang on just about any door that you encountered at that point. So um, you're not limited. I think two inches is pretty standard. I think it will work for you. But like I said, if you find that it's not working, just go ahead and cut that little slit in it at an angle um, lower on the far left-hand side and kind of coming up into that circle like that. And you will still have a very nice structural sound basket. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you guys today. I had so much fun making these sweet little door hangers. Um, they are gonna just be a lot of fun for you guys. I know they are. Like I said, they can be adapted to any holiday, any occasion. 
um, just about any little thing that you can think of theme wise to put in there. And I just know the recipients are gonna be surprised and just love this little treat. And these were made using the papers from the March Not Too Shabby Paper Pad of the Month Club or, or subscription. It is a great subscription. You get wonderful papers, great quality, and every month it's a little surprise. These do sell out quickly. I don't know currently as I'm recording it if they are available by the time this is gonna post, but if they are, I will have a link in the description notes below and I highly recommend just subscribing because you won't be disappointed. They're really fabulous. Make sure you hop on over to the Not Too Shabby shop and check out all the goodies that Jamie has for you over there. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> Alrighty folks, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.